Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit. Local 4 News at 5 starts now. Chaos on I-75. An off-duty Detroit police officer shot on the freeway. What we're learning about the victim and what may have sparked it all. Stimulus stalemate deadlock in Washington as Republicans block a bid to raise payments to $2,000. But we begin on Christmas Eve and the all-important forecast. So is there going to be snow on the roof to make Santa's landing just a little <laughs> bit softer? We have made it to Christmas <laughs> Eve and expected much colder temperatures. Yeah, you could really feel mm. that change. Let's get over to Paul Gross here off the top at 5 with what we can expect later tonight. Hey, Paul. Uh, hi there. And you know, I tell you, somebody tweeted me this morning at like 3 or 4 in the morning. She was out walking the dog and it was 50 degrees. And now here we are in the 20s with wind chill right now well down into the teens. Yeah, a powerful cold front came through during the late night hours and that has had uh, temperatures just on the downslide all day long. Now here's Storm Tracker 4. Look at the mess out to our east. Big storm system coming right up the spine of the Appalachians. But I want you to notice that there is a kind of a western edge of this snow right here that's coming up just like that. So some of that snow tonight just could graze the farthest eastern part of the area. And we'll break that down a little bit more coming up in about 10, 15 minutes. But suffice it to say from maybe like Detroit up through the Gross Points through Port Huron, it just be aware you might actually get a bit of a coating tonight. We'll keep an eye on that. But temperatures not falling too fast this evening, just dropping a few degrees into the low 20s uh, through uh, midnight. And again, perhaps a few flakes on the east side, but for the rest of us west of there, a pretty dry evening. We'll be back to talk about where Santa is as well. We're tracking Santa. We've got him on radar. We'll do all of that coming up in just a few, guys. All right, thanks, Paul. Now to brand new information into a shooting on I-75 that injured an off-duty Detroit police officer. It happened in the southbound lanes right near Springwells in southwest Detroit. We want to get to Victor Williams live tonight with where the investigation stands. Victor? Yes, Grant and Priya, we have seen so many interstate shootings here in 2020, but in this case, the two people knew each other. Police are still looking into the case of an off-duty officer involved shooting taking place right on I-75 Thursday morning. According to investigators, the off-duty officer was driving on the interstate around 3 a.m. when a 34-year-old man in a black F-150 repeatedly started to rear-end her car. The officer's vehicle was eventually pinned against the construction barrier wall, and that's when the suspect got out the truck, and at some point the two started to shoot at each other, exchanging gunfire resulting in both the officer and the 34 year old suspect being shot. The officer was grazed by a bullet and was able to find help on foot near Olivet Street. From there, she was taken to the hospital by medics and is now stable. As for the suspect, he was taken into custody and transported to the hospital where he's now listed in critical condition. And right now, police are not saying the relationship between the two, but I have a feeling we're going to be learning more about this developing story in the upcoming days. Reporting live from I-75, Victor Williams, Local 4. Yes, Back certainly a lot of questions. All right, thank you, Victor. A Detroit man is dead after an early morning hit and run crash. It happened around midnight at the intersection of Schoolcraft and Greenfield. That's on the city's west side. When officers arrived, they found a 44-year-old man in the street. Police say they are working to find any suspects and the investigation is ongoing. In a local 4 News update, we've learned a third person has died after an apparent murder suicide in Garden City. Sources tell local 4 an 81 year old man has died from his injuries. Police say they received a call Wednesday morning from a man saying he was going to take his life and that his location should be tracked. Investigators traced the call to a home on Rosalind Street and found a 20 year old man dead and a 77 year old woman Maria Ortega stabbed to death. Coming up at six, you'll hear reaction from neighbors as they come to terms with this Christmas tragedy. Now to big news tonight from the Detroit Lions interim coach Daryl Bevel and four assistants will be forced to sit out Saturday's game against Tampa Bay. Jamie Evans is here now with the decision and the people who are going to replace them on the sideline. Jamie, what is going on here? Grant, this is so bizarre. The Lions will have an interim coach to replace their interim coach who has to sit out Saturday's game due to NFL COVID protocols. And Bevel's not the only one. Several assistant coaches will be out as well. The Lions had two positive COVID cases this week, a player and a staff member. Through NFL contact tracing, several coaches are deemed high risk, close contacts, and thus have to stay away. So what now? 
Wide receivers coach Robert Prince will be the head coach Saturday against the Buccaneers. Quarterbacks coach Sean Ryan will be the play caller, which will be a first for him. And defensive coordinator Corey Unlin has to sit out along with three position coaches. Head coach assistant Evan Rothstein will be the defensive play caller. Daryl Bevel said today the Lions asked the league to move the game and they were denied. Obviously, um, you know, kind of disappointed with, uh, you know, how, how this uh, information came back to us. But, you know, it's, I mean, it's kind of the times that we're living in right now. And uh, so, you know, it was, you know, it was not unexpected. Have to be ready for everything, be ready to adjust. And uh, we'll be working with that uh, going into the game on Saturday. And get this, it's not like Bevel can text Sean Ryan his thoughts or call in as the game goes. NFL rules state the coaches can't have any contact. So these guys will be all on their own on Saturday. By the way, this is the first time this season a head coach had to miss a game due to NFL COVID protocols. Not same old Lions. This is new. This Grant, is, back this to is, you. This is very new. I know there's a lot of talk, too, about maybe Matt Stafford being a player coach the first time since the 70s, but obviously not in the cards, huh? Well, I bet he makes some calls on his own from the line there. <laughs> sure. Thanks, Jamie. Millions of Americans anxiously awaiting COVID relief could be waiting even longer. $600 checks set to go out before the new year are now in limbo, with the president refusing to sign the $900 billion relief package into law. Susan McGinnis explains how President Trump, now in Florida for the holidays, has left Washington in chaos. House Republicans today blocking Democrats' efforts to give Americans bigger direct payments than Congress passed in its $900 billion COVID relief package. The chair is constrained not to entertain the request. This after President Trump refused to sign the bill demanding bigger payments. I am asking Congress to amend this bill and increase the ridiculously low $600 to $2,000. Sending the entire bill into limbo, a package that also includes funding to keep the government running past Monday. Republicans imploring the president to sign. The best way out of this is for the president to sign, <laughs> right. to sign the bill, and I still hope that's what he decides. To okay. do. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi promising Democrats will vote Monday on a standalone bill giving Americans those $2,000 checks. Also next week, Congress will try to override President Trump's veto of the $740 billion defense bill funding the U.S. military. The president objecting to provisions, including one protecting social media companies. The president's actions seen as inflicting chaos in the final days of his presidency, also including a new wave of pardons, an early Christmas present to dozens of friends and allies. Types of pardons we're seeing with uh, vetoing the Defense uh, Authorization Act, threatening to veto uh, the emergency relief and the omnibus funding. You know, we've got a, we've got a wild card uh, in President Trump. Meanwhile, millions of struggling Americans spend Christmas Eve not knowing when help will arrive. In Washington, Susan McGinnis, Local 4. And experts predict the dozens of pardons awarded so far are only the beginning. They say to expect many more, including for the president's immediate family and possibly himself. Tonight, members of the Michigan delegation are weighing in on the stimulus stalemate and with President Trump's demand for those $2,000 checks. Some Democrats are finding themselves in a pretty unusual situation. After failing to get unanimous consent getting $2,000 direct payments into the bill, Congresswoman Debbie Dingell spoke out in Washington. It is not a silent night. All is not calm. For too many, nothing is bright. And for too many, they are not sleeping peacefully. After the president sparred publicly with Republicans throwing his support behind the $2,000 direct payment, Representative Rashida Tlaib spoke to us from Detroit. I think many of us hope that the president of the United States wasn't playing games with the lives of our residents, that he was serious about wanting 2,000 survivor check, if that's true, then he has until Monday. Republicans blocked the bill in part because they want to cut foreign aid before sending larger checks to Americans. A few Republicans also criticized the string of pardons issued by President Trump Wednesday. State Rep Fred Upton tweeting he was beyond disappointed the president used his pardon authority on Mark Siljander. The former Republican congressman from southwest Michigan served time in federal prison for an Islamic charity he worked with later linked to terrorist groups. Upton went on to say, just stunned. I wish the president would instead focus his energy on helping 
helping the millions of families and small businesses ravaged by the pandemic. A stalemate in Washington as lines at food banks continue to grow, with many worried about unemployment benefits running out and potentially losing their homes if eviction moratoriums are lifted. For the people is controversial that we're even debating it. Uh, this is their money. This is the, the time that they need it, and we should be able to give it back to them. The generosity of Metro Detroiters shines through on this Christmas Eve. Over this next hour, we're going to show you everything from chefs using their talents for a good cause to how Shinola is stepping in to help save Christmas for some deserving families. And we're keeping a close eye on Santa as he makes his way here to Metro Detroit. Look at him go there. But first, she says the threats don't stop there. Wayne County canvasser Monica Palmer speaking out after a woman was federally charged for threatening her online. That's next. 